I also like how the shoulder cannon in this game actually works the way we see it work in the first film. You know, it's like plasma, it melts through them. In the second movie and the second game, it seems like it's explosive, which is strange for a hunter. In order to complete this game, you have to memorize the correct path, because otherwise you can be running around at random, not making any progress for hours on end. There's some realism to it, for example, fire will set any body, even if it's dead, on fire. It's a pretty unusual first-person shooter for 99. Cloaking really doesn't seem to work in this game, and I'm not just talking about for the aliens, because I know they're not supposed to be able to not see you as a predator. But even the marines really seem to notice you quite easily, whether or not you're cloaked. There are some bugs and stability issues. A relatively... There are some bugs and stability issues. I'd say the most common bug is coming across an enemy that has died on his own. A sort of stillbirth spawning. Honestly, I've played this game for more hours than I care to count, and I've encountered fairly few important bugs. With that said, it is quite frustrating. I mean, the game as a whole. There are a few CGI cutscenes in this, and they're not terribly attractive anymore by today's standards, but there are some pretty decent ideas in them. This one is fairly creepy, but it doesn't have a lot of atmosphere. Like I said, it's the abandoned kind of thing, and very dark. You honestly don't get much of a sense of the world you're in, in this one. Alien vs. Predator 2. In 2211, some colonial marines are on a mission on a jungle planet called Kurari. They're hit by a predator. There's only one survivor. Nineteen years later, on the planet LV-1201, where alien activity has been documented, a team of scientists are researching into the species. They have several facilities on the planet. Among these are the forward observation pods and the POC. When one man's curiosity gets the better of him, an alien is unleashed upon the POC. Around this same time, the predator from 19 years prior comes to LV-1201 to hunt. But the sole survivor of Kurari, but the sole survivor, but the sole survivor of Kurari is on LV-1201, and he was expecting them. His forces managed to capture two predators, and the one from Kurari finds itself in pursuit of them. Weeks after an alien got loose in the POC, a team of marines is sent to investigate. When you play as marine, you will take on the role of one of these marines. His name is Frosty, and he's essentially Michael Bean's character from Aliens. Well, he's supposed to be, but he's really a very flat character. Maybe he didn't want to steal the thunder from the two outer space creatures. As the alien, you will breach the POC and as the Predator, you will pursue the man responsible for abducting your clanmates. In this game, everything is made faster. If the first game does too little to help you and to make it fair, this one almost does too much. The Predator is no longer as armored. He moves faster, he switches weapons faster, and where in the first one you either had to wait for your energy to recharge, or look for charges of them, which really make no sense why they'd be there. In this one, you can recharge your enemy whenever you want, but it will draw attention to your position. Locking in on a target, you know, the triangle thing, is faster, I think, but the disc moves slower and is less likely to return safely to you. In both games, you can call it back, though. You get the stick, called the combi stick from the second movie, and the pistol is altered. It's one of several examples of guns in this one that now have an alternate fire where they didn't in the first one. Alternate fire is three small bursts that have a sort of stun effect. Being hit with a pistol will drain your energy if you're a predator and will stun you if it doesn't kill you. The predator shoulder cannon now fires explosive blasts and it also now gets remote bombs and the net gun from the second movie. 
all three species can cut themselves out of the rope, but if the predator is fast, it can kill them before they do get out of the rope. If the marine is fast, he can shoot the predator from inside the rope. The predator is now granted a very tall leap. Now this doesn't replace your regular jump. It's an additional one, and you can't accidentally do it. With giving you this leap and the first couple of levels as the predator being very jungle-like, you can stalk humans unseen from above, and you can now take trophies. It'll even count them for you, although, irritatingly enough, it'll reset the count every time you complete a level, and they're pretty short. There are far more levels than the first one, but you also won't be restarting all the time. The game is much easier, even on fairly high difficulties, but it also has somewhat less of a sense of urgency, so you really get to take in your surroundings. This one very effectively builds an atmosphere. Unfortunately, it really has next to no replayability other than the four difficulty settings, and if you're nostalgic for the first game, just play this on the highest difficulty. It's quite similar. It doesn't let you save in the levels, and it doesn't tell you what to do. All three species now have a very definite nemesis, an enemy that you are very clearly pursuing. The marine obviously just has the alien queen, but the alien and the predator have humans. This one also really has much more of a sense of you accomplishing something. The first one was just kind of, okay, I'm dropping you into a snake pit now, just survive for 10 minutes. In this one, you impact the story. You don't have freedom over your impact of the story, but you drive the story forward. All three species have a very clear impact on the overall plot. And when you complete it, it isn't only the satisfaction of having completed something that at least at times was tough, you also feel like you won. In both of these games, the prayer is fairly threatened by the aliens, and you'll want to not let them get too close. This one is more fair about not sending too many aliens at you at once, partially because of the randomization of the first one, but it is still very tense. The alien now gets two buttons for climbing on walls. It's no longer on the crouch key, like in the first one. And one of the buttons is a toggle, so that if you just press it, you'll be crawling on walls until you either repress the toggle or hold the up for crawling on walls. Its tail is now used for stunning the enemy, unless the enemy is too tough, in which case it won't quite stun it. But if you hold the button in for about a second and then release it, it can also kill. Stunning enemies makes it much easier to get live head bites, which is really the best way to get more health. It's also a lot more clear that you're getting health from tearing apart bodies. The effects for ripping enemies to shreds have improved immensely, and the gore is really well done. You'll see organs, rib cages, an occasional eyeball, a jaw, and it's quite easy to rip them apart, although there is the occasional torso that just will not be ripped. The alien can again launch itself at enemies, but it's now easier. It has its own key, and if you launch yourself directly at an enemy and you're close enough to them, basically meaning you won't land in front of them, but leap at them, you can tear them completely apart like that instantly killing them, if you don't mind losing the potential health. This makes the alien a lot more fair and a lot more effective, a lot more fun to play as. It too gets a high leap upward. Also, in this one, you actually get to go through the life cycle, meaning when you start single player, the first thing you are is not a full-grown alien, but a face hugger, and you have to find an appropriate subject after which you will burst out of their chest. And yes, this is all first-person perspective. Until you've grown into a full-grown drone. I say drone because that's now the term for the regular aliens, the black ones that we know from the movies, H.R. Geiger's original design. 